Okay. Okay, hi, it's Heather with Creepy Holiday Stuff. I decided to go live on my um, YouTube channel. I want to start going live on here. So if you are um, into painted styrofoam heads, definitely subscribe. Like my uh, channel and share. That would be awesome. Let me see if I can... How do I share? Let me share this to my page. On Facebook really quick give me one second it's not sharing hold on one second I'm just trying to share Share my life. One sec. I usually go live on my Facebook, but I wanted to start going live on YouTube, so. Oh, wait, it didn't. Hold on, let me hit the share again. Sorry, sorry. Try this one more time. There we go. Okay. So, um, oh, let me go back to YouTube. <clears throat> All right. Okay. So I'm doing a giveaway for my Facebook group, Creepy Corner, and um, their giveaway is going to be a styrofoam head with the eyes are going to be already painted and done and the eyebrows, and she's going to have eyelashes and, um, so that's my giveaway, and I was going to be announcing the giveaway tomorrow um, in group. So I wanted to get the head done today, so I thought, hey, I want to start going live on my YouTube, so I'll just do it, um, make the head on YouTube. So uh, let's see. I've been doing this lately. I'm so eager to see your method. Hi, Sweet Tea's Craft House. Thank you for joining. Yeah, is this just going to be a simple eye, nothing really fancy? Uh, like I said, no, there's not going to be any eyeshadow. Hopefully you have a good view and the lighting's not too bad. Um, she actually, I need to do another coat of paint too. This is warm beige. This is a great uh, uh, a skin flesh color uh, by Deco, Deco Art. So I'm going to do another coat of that after I do the eyes. And I did see that there is a few little pitted areas that I missed. So... I'll show you guys how I use this smooth finish to fix the pitting that I don't get on my uh, regular routine of making a smooth surface. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and get started. And I'm using um, a sketch and wash pencil. These are really good to use because if you make a mistake, a little bit of water it wipes right off. Okay, so let me just turn. There we go. It's a little better. All right, so the styrofoam has already indentation where the eyes are, the eyebrow, nose, and mouth. So for the eyes, I usually start right on the bottom, this little indent here. I'm going to go ahead and just draw my line right under there on each side. You don't want to go way up here where the corner is because then your eyes are going to be upward, okay? Oh, got blurry. Sorry. I might have to move the camera back if it keeps getting blurry. 
Okay. Now, the indent of the eye is way up here. So unless you're making really big eyes, I would stay away from way up here. It does look really cute when you're doing big eyes, but I'm going to make more normal eyes. So there, it bubbles up here where the eye is. I'm going to go about three quarters of the way up. And I'm just going to draw an almond shaped eye. Just like that. I'm going to have to move my camera back. It keeps trying to refocus. Sorry. Okay. Do the same thing on this side. Go about three quarters up. And it's best if you look. Look at your head straight on to make sure that it's fairly even. If you don't get it totally even when it's time to paint it, you could usually get it fixed. So this one I can already tell. Let me show you how easy it is to wipe this off also. You just, look how easy that comes off. That's the difference between using a regular pencil and the sketch and erase pencil. Or, I'm sorry, sketch and wash pencil. It comes off really easy. So I'm going to look at her straight on so I can try to get this even. That's a little better. Okay, so just like that, really simple. And you already have your guide. You have the indents there. No wonder I screw up so much. I do not start out with a pencil. I go straight. Oh, yeah, no. Don't go straight to the paint. <laughs> do not go straight to the paint. You know, I've actually tried that uh, maybe once or twice. And I'm like, no, no can do. <laughs> um, this is actually called the Smooth Finish Foam Coating. And this is a... I have a tutorial on my website on how to get... A smooth finish on your styrofoam head um, you can purchase that for $4.99 but what I don't have on that tutorial is this so um, let me just show you really quick while I have it out all you do you can see I've used it quite a bit you just get a little bit and what I do is I just kind of mix it around what I'm gonna use right there just mix it around and it gets a lot softer. It's already soft, but it gets way softer. And then you just take a little bit. And you could put this on before you do your Mod Podging. You could put it on after you do your Mod Podging. You can put it on after you paint it. And what's nice about this is um, you paint right over it. And just stick it right in there. Push on wherever you have the little indents. Uh, pitting. There's one right there too. And just kind of smooth it out with your finger. See how it went right in those holes? It totally covered them up. And then you can just paint directly over it. But it's very important that you smooth it out. If you put way too much, you're having trouble. You can use a little wet, you know, wet rag and just wipe over it to smooth it out and it's called Floracraft smooth finish foam coating you can get them anywhere Walmart um, all your craft stores yeah it works out really good but you know your best bet is to try to find a head that does not have so much pitting if there's a lot of pitting then you know it's so hard um, that's why I, during this coronavirus, um, I've had to order my shipments and it's been very frustrating because you know how it is with styrofoam heads, you don't know what you're getting. It's better if you can go in person, pick your own heads, otherwise you can end up with a mess. Okay, so now we get back to the eyes. So now that we have this, um, right here in the corner, I'm just going to do like a little curve. It's going to be the tear duct area. Nothing, you know, too much. Just a little bit. On both sides. Just like that. Okay. 
Also, let's let this dry before you paint over it. Don't paint over it while it's wet. So for the eyes, um, you're going to be, the eyeball itself is going to be closer inward to the nose than outward. And you want to look at your head so that you have the eyeball like looking at you. Unless you're making um, a different direction, like looking off to the side. Or for example, this head, this head, she is looking cross-eyed. Her eyes are looking in at her nose. So you don't want to, if you don't want to do an expression like that, make sure the eyeball is looking at you. So just go in and make your circle. I like my, uh, my eyes to be hidden down at the bottom. I don't care for the white to show underneath because that's not really how we look. The eye is usually, you know, covered unless you have an expression. Okay. If you have trouble making your circle because you can't do the whole thing, just go ahead and do the whole circle. Go around. It's okay if you go over that because I'm sure you're going to be putting eyelashes, eyeshadow, and stuff like that. Okay. And then, so look at her and make sure she's looking at you. And then do the other side. Let's go around. Do your best to get the eyes as close as possible to the same size. Okay. That looks pretty close. And don't forget, these styrofoam heads do have a slant. So she's not going to be totally straight. Sometimes you'll look and go, oh, wow, it looks lower. Well, that's because there's a slight, slight slant. Okay. So don't forget, please share, share this video, especially if you know anybody that's interested in this kind of stuff. Um, painting styrofoam heads are really awesome because you can do them for any occasion. You can make them for birthday parties. Um, if you, you go doing? to my Facebook page, what are you doing? I'm on YouTube. Hi. YouTube. Um, are you leaving or? Okay. Um, sorry. Um, birthday parties. You can make characters, cartoon characters. Um, if you go to my Facebook page, creepy holiday stuff, and you go to photos and then album. You'll see all the heads I've created. Also on Instagram, you can find me, Pinterest. Um, and you'll see the different kind of heads you can make. There's so many. Um, they're super cute. Like for Halloween, you can make a Halloween cartoon looking face. I did one, a baby Frankenstein. And then I took a big green bowl, put it inside, and it was perfect for chips or candy. So much you could do. Okay, so there we go. That's our starting for our eyes. I'm going to go ahead and do the eyebrows. Now up here, you can feel where it's supposed to be like a brow bone. And it's pretty high up there. So I'm just going to start like underneath that brown bone area. Okay. And then I'm just going to give her not too drastic, just a little bit of an arch. Because the, the person who wins this tomorrow in my group... I don't know what she's going to be creating. So, like I said, this is a this is a a giveaway for my group and I'm just doing the eyes, eyebrows um and then they get to finish her and I'm going to put eyelashes too. So, I don't want to do anything too crazy. Cuz like if it was a Halloween one, I'd go really high arched and just very simple, nothing fancy. And then look at your head so that you get them as even as possible. Sometimes eyebrows can be really hard. Now, I will tell you, um, if you would like to learn more about making these heads, I do have a Facebook group, Creepy Corner, the one that I'm doing the giveaway, that I do uh, pre-recorded tutorials and live tutorials giveaways and stuff. And on there, I just showed my uh, group ladies a special tip 
that I shared with them on how to make realistic eyebrows on your styrofoam head. And this is what I showed them. Look at that. Can you see that? Look at that. Really realistic looking. But you have to have a Facebook page in order to get in that. And it is a subscription group. Okay, I'm ready to start painting, outlining. I wish I had this one right here. What is your group name? The group name is Creepy Corner. Um, if you go to my Facebook page, Creepy Holiday Stuff, and just click on groups, you'll see it. Um, it is a subscription group. You can cancel any time. It's $15 a month. Um, when you go in there, there's a nice variety of um, the pre-recorded tutorials and live tutorials and stuff that you have immediate access to. And then we have a calendar where I uh, put, you know, everything that we do for the month so they know when and our giveaways and I have polls and stuff. It's a lot of fun and it has a really great group of women in there. They're all very supporting and they're just really great. Okay, so I'm gonna go, oh, and I, let me tell you too, when you paint your styrofoam head, Make sure you use a, a brush like this is my favorite brush oh my gosh it's so worn I couldn't even tell you the number or size of it but it's soft and it kind of tapers around I use this to paint uh, my heads I love it okay then I'll show you what brushes I'll use for the uh, varnish because we are going to varnish put a seal on her eyes when we're done. So I'm going to, um, hi, Yvette. Thank you so much for popping in. Yeah. I wanted to start doing, um, some YouTube lives because I always just transfer over my videos. So I'm like, no, I'm going to start doing lives on here too. Cause there's a lot of people that don't have Facebook, I guess. So I want to make sure they can see if they're interested. Okay. So I'm going to go and use um, Deco Art, it's lamp. It's my favorite black that I use. Um, there's other blacks you can buy, but they're just not deep and rich. Like there's one called Bowtie. I started using that one. I didn't like it. It's almost a dull, let's say similar black to this. Just, I don't know. I didn't care for it. This is what I use 99% of the time. Okay. And um, this actually is a number five. It's my outliner brush. I dipped it in water and then dabbed it on my rag, okay? And we're gonna outline. And if I have time after I do these eyes, I'm gonna um, do this head, finish her up. I gotta do the eyes, the glitter, the paint. So if I have time, I'll do this. Um, actually, I might end this video and, and do another live uh, for this one, but we'll see if I have time. Okay. All right. So make sure you always use your pinky. Your pinky really helps your hand balance and keeps it to go straight, your lines and stuff. It gives you more control. If you just try, you know how you paint on canvas like this? That works for a lot of people, but when you're doing lines and stuff, for me, on a small head like this, I got to have balance. I got to have my pinky and move your head around to wherever you feel comfortable. Don't put too much on your brush because you don't want to glob the paint. So this video is, uh, this live is a really good example of tutorial in my group. Don't worry if you paint into the eye area. It doesn't matter. You're going to cover all that up. And also, if you know you get out in the lines here, if you don't wipe it off in time, just make sure you have your base paint like I had the warm beige for this. When you're all done, you'll go through and do some touch ups and cover, you know, and kind of fix any errors that you did. Okay. 
excited today to show step by step in your group how you paint for beginners. Um, I don't see, I had somebody ask me about that too. I don't have an actual video um, on, I don't know, my tutorials are pretty much step by step, but I don't have one um, specifically like titled for beginners. They're all kind of like this. So I'll show you how to draw and then I, I'll paint. But I did have a, a lady ask me if, she, if I had anything that was for beginners. Um, so I'm going to be doing a video to try to make it more basic step by step um, and include it in my group. But um, the lady did join and she did find very helpful the videos that I do have. Because any videos also in my on my website for sale, they're also included in the group, which is because um, the group members get my pay tutorials for free. And it does have a step by step on how to get a smooth surface on your head. Um, and then I'll, I have eye tutorials, mouth tutorials, and then tutorials on how to draw and paint um, heads. But again, I don't have one specifically, you know, saying beginners. It's mostly like this, you know, which is pretty, I would consider pretty basic, you know, step-by-step -step beginners. Just don't have it titled that. Okay, so let's go to the eyebrow. I'm going to use my same outliner. If you're making thicker eyebrows, I suggest you go with a little, you know, thicker brush. This is a two and it's pointy. Um, I need to get that wet because when you use your outliner on thicker eyebrows, you're going to get some streaks in there. Just like for lips, you don't want to use this on lips for the outline. Yes. And also something that does help me when I'm uh, trying to do straight lines. And I always tell my group ladies, because everybody has their own thing that helps them. And what helps me is I take a slight breath in and I slowly blow it out as I'm making my line. And I don't know, it just gives me so much more control. So you might find something that helps you. But if you have trouble, try that. My brush is kind of getting a little frayed here. Okay, I'll join today. Love you. Oh, thank you so much, Laura. I will, um, when you join, after there's a link in the pin post and there's uh, a link to PayPal to subscribe. So once you do that, then you go to the group and request to join, and then I'll go in and approve. And then I'll go ahead and send you a message or on your welcoming email or welcoming post in group. I'll go ahead and um, help you out with a lot of tips on how to maneuver around the group, you know, letting you know where our files are and this and that. Okay. What type of paint do you use? I use only um, acrylic paints. And over 90% of my paints are Deco Art. I do use this brand every so often. I, I don't know how to pronounce it. If it's Serum, Serum Coat or Caracoat, Caram Coat, I don't know. But they're all acrylic paints. And I just love Deco Art. I use that for almost everything. They also, you can get these awesome uh, Glitterifics by Deco, or this one is Folk Art, sorry, but I do use Deco Art, uh, the glitter paint. It's awesome. And then, like I said, I'll show you what I use to put the, the clear coat on it to seal it. You're welcome, Doreen. Thanks for popping in here. Okay, so let me just make this a little bit thicker. And like I said, I'm making these kind of simple because I don't know what the lady's going to do with the head. For anybody just joining, this head is a giveaway in my group. I have monthly giveaways. And this month's giveaway is a head already prepped and ready for them with eyes 
painted, eyebrows painted, and eyelashes attached. And then they get to create whatever they want with her. So that's why I'm kind of just doing very simple, nothing too fancy. And I'm not even going to do the eyeshadow on her because, like I said, I don't know what, you know, they'll do, do with her. So if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and share. Let's see. I, I like Folk Art Brand. Yes, Folk Art Brand is very good. Um, I have some Folk Art Brand as well. That you can use to get more smoother surface on the styrofoam. In other words, to see less of the small holes. Absolutely, Helen. Um, I do have a tutorial on my website, creepyholidaystuff.com. And it's a tutorial on how to get your smooth surface. Um, I will tell you it's with Mod Podge. Um, but I give you the steps on how I get it. And your best bet, though, is to make sure you get ahead with as minimal pitting as possible. Um, styrofoam is hard. You know, it's, they're put together by little balls. So you just, you got to do your best. But if you do have, now on that tutorial where I show you how to get a small surface, I mentioned earlier, um, it, I don't show this, so I should do a new tutorial. But if you just can't, no matter how much you do, you still see a few. Like I didn't realize I had a few here. I use the Floracraft Smooth Finish Foam Coating. And you'll, you'll put that in the little areas that you just can't seem to do anything with. Okay, I'm just moving to the other eye. And then don't worry if your line is, looks too thick and it's going into the eye. Because like I said, we're going to paint the inside so you'll be able to cover that. Okay, because you can see, see how I made that one thicker? Because my brush, I should change my liner. This one is dark enough. I'll use this one. This is a 10. And you can buy these, um, these packs. You don't need anything expensive. Look at this. This is a value pack. Um, you can get it at Michael's for pretty cheap. I don't know, five, six bucks. And it comes with four. You could get bigger packs. Um, it's always nice to have that expensive brush. I have a couple of them, but I tell you, these value pack brushes work just as good for me. You might go through them a little faster. You're welcome, Helen. Okay, so let's just do this outline. The eye. Yeah, this line is way thicker. All right, so these eyes, I was going to give her blue eyes. <laughs> so to get my blue eyes, very similar to this cross-eyed girl, I just use a simple blue. This is Craft Smart. Um, my daughter paints, and she had a big bottle, and this one, it works just as well. It's just called Bright Blue. And then I'll also use a little bit of this ice blue. I love the ice blue metallic paint by Deco Art. If you look at my heads, you'll find some uh, uh, 4th of July heads. And the blue on there is this. I really love it. And then you've got to have your white. So I'm not even going to get my pupil in there yet. I'm going to wait a minute. I'm going to go back to this messed up brush. So I'm just going to get the color in here. I don't have too much water. If you got too much water in your brush, it's just going to run. Kind of like the base coat, just get this blue in there. And let it dry. Thank you for the hard sievet. OK, 
Okay. All right, we'll let that dry. While that's drying, I'm gonna go ahead and put some white in the eyes. This is where I use, what is this number? I think it's a two. Yeah, it's a two, but it goes kind of pointy. It's the one I was showing you guys. I'm gonna get some white. So I want her to look a little more realistic eyes and realistic eyes are not solid white. Solid white is perfect for cartoon characters. So we're going to add a little color into the eye, but I just want to get the white in here and make sure you just kind of really pointed brush and just kind of get right under there. Don't worry if you go out over the lines because we'll retouch everything up. Just get way in there. It'll look messy at first, but don't worry. It's a real brown paint. It is a real brown paint. And the red paint show up on top of the brown. Um, for like a dark, a, the dark skin tone, is that what you're talking about, Doreen? Because let me see here, I can show you actually, um, I'll go to my, if I go to my Instagram, you can see the, all the, I did a few darker tones, um. I just don't remember. Okay, so this is a really dark tone. Um, you could see that the red on there, the red in there doesn't stand out strong, but you can see it really nice. I believe that's Tuscan red. Um, trying to see all this. Okay, here's a good one. Oh, what color was that? This was fun. This is a Christmas one I did, and I used the red. Um, what color was that? I think Cafe Latte or something. I'm not sure. But you see how the red stands out? You can see it quite well. Now, another thing you can do, um, if that's what you're talking about for lipstick and stuff, when you paint your skin tone... If you're worried, if you're using a darker brown and you're worried that the red lipstick won't show up, don't worry. Just paint um, your lips, you know, a tan or a white, then put your red on top. Then you don't have to worry about it at all. Okay, we just, and make sure you look back and forth, get it as even as possible. Yes, it is a super good idea. Tuscan red is my favorite. When I buy my reds, I buy a nice handful of Tuscan red because it's my favorite one. I used to always use the color lipstick, and then I found Tuscan red, and it's such a Deep, pretty red. I love it. That's the. Where is it? I had it here. I think it's right here. This one. Look at that red. It's beautiful. Deco art paint. Yes. Okay. Again, don't worry if things don't look even. Touch ups fix everything. And I always tell the ladies in my group, if you get frustrated, if you're just having trouble, set it down and walk away. Come back to it and you'll, you'll do much better. Okay, so I'm actually going to take just a touch of this. Just a touch. Not too much. Just a slight touch. And then go back to my white. I don't want to turn it 
pink, I just want to give it a little bit of color so it's not so white. Because you know how we have blood vessels in our eyes and everything? You know? We have a lot of stuff going on in the white of our eyes. And another thing I like to do, I'll take just a dab of black and go right around the rim again. And then I'll come back and I'll just pull a little bit of it out into the white. Don't worry if you mess up the outline of your eyeball. You can fix that later. Just pull some of it out and just kind of pull it out to the rest of the eye. Then you can go back with your black and fix your line. Thank you so much, Doreen. Thank you. to bring it out a little bit you'll find doing the eyes is just a matter of a lot of blending Just blending this black into the eye a little bit. Just a little, not a lot. Just so it looks like the eyeball is part of the white. Okay, and then I'm gonna do the same thing over here. But in this corner, I'm going to take a little bit of white, just a little bit of white, and just dab it there and grab a little bit, I'm sorry, a little bit of red and a little bit of white and get a nice pink. Like that. And just kind of dab it here in the corner. I might have put a little too much. I fix this here. Mine's kind of messed up, but that's okay. I'll fix that later. All right, and then take some of that same color and just kind of put it in here, not too much. Get your white. But don't take away from that pink corner because that's the tear area. Just kind of blend it in. And I'm taking that pink that I put in the corner and just blending it out to the white. If I have too much, I'll add a little white. You don't have to be perfect or worry about making it look exact. Okay, I'm going to take some of this black. Go around the eye. Bring it out just a little bit. Mm 
I am continually wiping my brush. I'm doing that because I don't want to glob my paint on here. Okay, that's all I did. So now I'm ready to go in um, with the blue. Go ahead and I'm going to keep using my number. What was it the two I believe it was? Yeah, the pointed one. Go back in with my second coat. Okay, I'm going to take my metallic ice blue and go around the outline right in front of that black all the way around. Okay. Then I'm going to get my outliner and I'm going to dab it in some white and I'm going to go four square, like a four square dot, one dot, two dot, three dot, four. Dab my brush and then I'm going to just go around like a sun. Okay, and then I'm going to go around where I put that blue dab my brush get some more white one two three four and go around like a sun right in between the center and the outside If you get too much white in there, it's okay. Just add a little more of your blue. I'm not going all the way into the center because I gotta add my pupil. Okay, so let's go ahead and get the pupil in there now so we have more of a guide. So we're gonna get the black with our outliner and you're not just gonna draw a circle. You're going to look at your head to make sure that your head is, her eye is looking at you. And you're going to dab. Don't get it, don't have a glob of paint either. Okay, I have to turn her so she's looking at me, sorry. And I'm just dabbing. This is how I do it. You know, I, I'm sure there's a lot of other ways, but this is just how I do it works better for me that way. See how it's already coming together? You could see it as an eyeball. If you were doing a dark brown eye, would you use the same technique? Absolutely. It's all a matter of your color choices. Um, same technique if you're doing hazel eyes, green eyes. To me, this is the most basic beginner standard eye making. Um, you can do a lot more advanced, you know. To me, this works out really well. The eyes have a realistic look and you're not putting tons of work into doing it. It's just simple. You're just going around making like a little sun and it works great. You don't have to do, you know, too much. I will tell you, the more time you put in it, the better the eye's going to look. But this works out good. And um, if you're not happy, just go like I just did. Back and forth. Add your, your blue, um, your white, until you get the look you want. You just got to remember what you're doing because you want to do it on the other eye. I'm going to go back to my metallic. Um, to. Um, yeah, you could just pull out yours, love. That's okay. I can get mine out. Thank you. 
sorry, I had a question asked to me. So um, go back to your metallic because you want to have that deep color. To me, the eyes look more striking if you're doing the light colored eyes, if you have that deep ring. That's just a preference to me. So I'm going to add this metallic blue. Look at how beautiful it is. It looks like it's strong, but that's okay because I'm just going to blend it right in. You're welcome, Helen. And just pull it right out into the eye. And you see how when you're pulling it out into the eye, it just makes it look more realistic. Do a little bit more white. Now, also, what I like to do, I'll go back and I'll dab my pupil just so it's wet with the paint. Dab my brush on the rag and then pull out some of that black. Not a lot. If you end up getting out too much black and you got a lot of black streaks, don't worry. Just restart the process. It's okay. Then I'm going to go back and do my ring again. I lose my ring often and I have to get it back. Hold on, I can't see here. If you have too much of it in there, put your metallic blue in there, pull it. And you go a little bit more shading up on the top of the eye because the top of the eye normally has more shading because our eyelashes are there. So keep that in mind when you're doing it. Don't forget down here. Okay, I'm gonna go back and outline the other part. Here on the ring. And just pull it in. All right, let's take a look. All right, I went way too dark on this part. I don't want it that dark. I can fix it with white. good idea to always you know look at your eye to see what exactly you got going on so you don't overdo it okay so I think pretty good there I'm just going to um, re-outline her eyeball I lost it. Okay. 
So don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And um, if you hit the notification bell, then you'll be notified whenever I go live on YouTube. Okay. Pretty simple. Just standard simple eye. Nothing too fancy. We're going to do a little highlight in the eye. I'm going to use my outliner. And we're just going to if picture the eyeball as a clock. So I'm going to go ahead and put in highlight about between 10 and 11 o'clock if this was a clock. And it's going to be partially in the pupil and partially in the iris. I'm just going to dab it. There's different styles of highlighting. That's the simplest. And then about 4 o'clock right down here, a little smaller dot. Look at how much the highlight brings that eyeball to life. It does, huh? Okay, so I still need to do the other eye, but this eye, let me get the lashes out. I didn't grab my lashes. Eyelashes um, can run you a lot of money. So, it's better to be choosy on where you buy them. If you plan on making these heads to sell them, you know, of course you want your eyelashes to, your eye, your heads to look good, but you also, you know, want to try to keep the cost down without ruining the look of your head okay so I used to specifically only buy my lashes at CVS and also excuse me dang it I'm bumping everything with my chongo here in my head um thank you Thank you, Sweetheart Designs and Helen. Um, I still will go to, uh, if I'm doing a, like a really fancy head and I know that it's going to be a lot of work, the cost is going to be up there and I I want that really 3D thickness, I will, you know, I will go with CVS and I'll grab me some specifically for the head I'm doing. But uh, cost-wise, you get beautiful lashes at, on Wish. For really low prices. Um, this is one of my group ladies. Candy, sweet friend, sent me these lashes. Look at these. And they have little rhinestones on them. They're beautiful. From Wish. The only problem with Wish. These are from CVS too. The only problem with Wish is that it takes a long time to get them. So um, that's the only thing. If you're willing to wait for them, that's where you should buy them. Candy also got me some pretty, uh, when I do my butterflies, the mystical feathers um, lashes. Anyway, so I just wanted to show you. These I really love. They're very spiky, though. Um, I like to kind of look. It's like I said, it's hard not knowing what the ladies are going to, or who wins this in my group, what they're going to make it for. But you'll really see how the eyelash brings the, yes, wish takes forever. They do have some of the items where you can click for faster shipping from warehouses in the States. That's what that takes forever too. <laughs> but I, when I order, I order bunches. I order bunches so that they come in um, different times. Oh, that's pretty flashy. I'm not going to use this eyelash on her because the winner may want to do some pretty eyeshadow, which is going to have a hard time getting it on there with a, those lashes. So I won't use those. Um... These are all pretty long. You know what? Maybe I'll do the simple that Candy got me because these are so pretty and they're not too big and thick. They're just really simple and they'll be able to do their eyeshadow. Let's see. It's just a simple one. Nothing too fancy. Can't really see the 
tones. And then I'm going to leave them bottom so that if they want to paint on their own bottom eyelashes or if they want to glue um, some false eyelashes on the bottom, they'll have the opportunity to do that themselves. Let me try this one. I just want to check this before I move on to the other eye. Just want to curve it just like you're putting eyelashes on your own eye. Okay, that's the one I'm going to use. That's what I like. So I'll put those on last because I use uh, tacky glue and you want to keep it laying flat. Oh my gosh, I'm beautiful already with those lashes. Oh, thank you, Yvette. Thank you. Okay, so see the difference in the white part of the eye? I mean, that I could actually, I need to whiten that up a little bit. But you see how it has some color to it? It's not as just white. There's some, you know, it gives it more depth, I guess you would say. Okay, let's move on to the next eye. And you can watch again. And this might help. So I'm going to go in with some more blue. Make sure you don't have too much water on your brush. Oh, I should have did the white of the eye first. Oh, well, I'll do that after. Okay, and then I'm going to just go with the metallic ice blue all the way around. Don't worry about your outline because you're going to add more to it. And then use my outliner. Add my white. One, two, three, four. Dab my brush and go around like a sun. Go around again and pull in that ice blue put some more dab I'm gonna put the black so I could pull that in already also remember don't go too thick Okay, get the black off your paintbrush because it'll mess up your eye. Go ahead and pull in all the way around. Go back to your white. Like you're doing a star or sun all the way around. Oh, I pulled too much black, so I'm gonna grab my blue, get it in there before it dries. My metallic all around, and then white again. See, it's really easy to fix fix your flaws so don't don't get upset or worried about it and again remember to make the top part of the eye a little bit more shadowed because it looks more natural that way I'm going to grab a little more white over here.
and just kind of look back and forth at your eyes to get them as close as you can and don't worry if they don't look exactly the same because eyes nobody's eyes look exactly the same in real life so don't even worry so I'm gonna get my pupil in there so I have a better guide remember look at both I want her to be looking at me so dab and then look make sure you have them about the same you don't want a big difference and see you can't really see um, much differences you know if you really stare but if you got the same color pattern on both sides it's you're, it's gonna look good and you don't have to worry oh there's too much white on this side or, or the other side because it also gives it like a natural lighting look highlight so Okay, now I'm going to go in with my black and outline her eye again. Okay, and now outline her eyeball. I am actually noticing this eye needs to be a little isn't quite even. This eye looks bigger. <laughs> That's okay, I can fix it. Okay, go back to uh, doing her white of her eye, and then we're going to do eyelashes. So I'm going to put some more white. I might end up going into the line, but that's okay. I'll fix it. If you can do the white part, it's probably better to do that first before you do the actual eye color. Um, let's grab just a touch of red, blend it in there, get some more white. I'm trying to pull out some of this black if it's still wet, it's not wet. If it dries too much on you, just add some water to your brush, dab it,
lost my outline, so I'm just going to come back. Okay. Do the little tear duck, some red. Mix it with the white to make it pink. Just do a little dab right in there. Get some white. Pull some of that pink in like that. This side I think I have too much pink. Line this side. Just gently pull in a little bit, not a lot, just a little. Get your white. Oop. Make sure you don't have too much water on your brush because see, this will happen. You'll get a bubble. If you do, a bubble of water. Just dab it with a cloth or a paper towel. Too much white. Okay. I do see I have a little bit too much pink on this side. Okay, and you know what I'm going to do because I see that I made the line come down too much. I'm going to take my base coat, make sure I don't have any black on there, and I'm just going to bring this up a little bit. See how that fixed it? Instantly fixed it. And I could, any pencil that was left there, I just go in and cover. Might take two coats. Okay. Um, I just fix this part of her eye. Okay, so now it's time to do the eyelashes, and she will be done. She's a very simple face, nothing too much. And be very careful when you're doing your heads and you're painting them. Um, if you have a lot of, you know, thick paint on there, if you're going to put a fan, don't, don't. Yeah, after you're showing about 10 minutes, I'm going to take you back. Okay, I'm done in probably like 10 minutes. I'm just going to put eyelashes. Um, your head will crack. If you try to force your paint to dry and put new coats and stuff, your paint, your head's going to crack. It's going to look like the moon. You don't want to do that. <sighs> okay, I need another coat under there, but I'm not going to worry about it right now. So, um, I believe it was this set. Or no. Shoot, which one was it? 
Maybe this one. Yeah, because I want her to be able to put her eyeshadow on there. Paint her eyeshadow on there. You have the highlight. Oh, my goodness, Helen. Thank you. <laughs> I totally forgot about the highlight. Thank you so much. I totally forgot about the highlight. Okay. I need to highlight. Um. <laughs> I am going to, because I'm going to make it like the sun, you know, looking at her this way. So I'm going to put the highlights going to go on the same side as the other one. Between 10 and 11. Just dab, dab, dab. And then about 4 o'clock. Wow, see how it just brings the eyes to light. I have to do some touch-ups, honestly. I see some touch-up needing on there, but I'm going to get her eyelashes on first and go from there. Because I see some areas that i got to fix, like the bottom of her eye and stuff. But I just wanted to give you kind of a general tutorial on the, the process of getting kind of realistic eye look. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Helen. I can't believe I missed that. Okay. Oh, also, if I didn't show you guys, this is a sketch and, and wash. Okay. That I really recommend. So when I'm putting eyelashes on the head, I like to put... Um, do it, i got to do it the best way you can see. I like to put the glue on the head and the eyelash. I use tacky glue. Um, made by Clear Gel, or I'm sorry, made by Eileen. Eileen's. You know, there it is. Sorry, it's backwards. I don't know how to flip, but it's Clear Gel Tacky Glue, and this gives a nice strong bond. When I first started doing heads, I uh, I used eyelash glue. Yes, that works really good, but not as good. You, I feel so confident with my eyelashes on these heads with the tacky glue. They are really on there. Um, the regular eyelash glue is a little iffy. But, I mean, they hold, but they could come off. So I just get a nice layer. And use a brush that you don't normally use. This is a number four. It's got kind of a flat tip on it. I just, I try not to mix my painting brushes with the glue brushes, even though I wash them all. Don't go super heavy on this, but make sure you have a nice, good amount. And then just right along the line, I do a little coat. Not too much. I probably should have uh, sealed the eye first, but... I'll do it afterwards. Just want to make sure I remember to show you. Okay, so just kind of curve your lash to the shape of the eye. You should always check too. Make sure you got um, a lot of times I will double these because they don't cover the eye as much as I'd like. So I'll double the lashes. This one I don't need to. And this uh, tacky glue dries clear. So you don't got to worry about that either. And just like you're putting on eyelashes on your own eyeball. Some of my paintbrushes have this little point. And I just go in and remove that paint that might bubble up. Sometimes you have eyelashes that work good, and sometimes they just want to keep turning. This one looks like one that wants to do that. So I'm just going to kind of hold it a second. So you need your eyelashes to be the very last thing because they'll ride up on you and slide. You have to continually check it. Push on the corners if you can. 
and just keep checking it. Don't let it dry without checking it because then you're going to be stuck with them attached on there all messed up. Yeah, the highlight. Oh, that's what I read already. So, see, for example, this side wants to keep coming up. It's not going to do me a lot of good right now because it's still very wet. But I try to keep glue off. So, I'm going to go ahead and Dura Clear this side for you so you can see. Um, for the eyeballs, I'm going to use Dura Clear Gloss Varnish. Um, I'll try to remember to put my link, my affiliate links in the description below to what I use. However, I noticed that one of my links on Amazon for the DuraClear um, change to some ridiculous price DuraClear, which is not accurate. Some some of the sellers bumped up their prices, so you got to be really careful. So I'm going to try to remember to change that link to the regular price. They're selling it for like 20 bucks, and it's like, no, 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 no. DuraClear gloss varnish does not cost $20, $20 for an 8-ounce bottle. That's a major uh, price gouge, so don't pay that. Um, you could use satin, gloss, or matte. I highly recommend using the gloss for the lips and for the eyeballs. Um, and then I'm not going to varnish or seal her face because, like I said, they're going to make a head, uh, make, paint her and do more stuff to her. Is that better to use than the Mod Podge? Um, I absolutely prefer this over Maj Podge completely for the seal. Also, you know, when you're using glitter and stuff, Maj Podge, you take a chance on losing that nice shimmer. I use a, a strong, not strong, but a firm squared brush. This is a number four, but it's firm. I even think DuraClear recommends using kind of a firm brush. And I always double check by tapping. I tap my my stuff first to make sure no paint's coming off. And uh, I just brush it on there gently. But the gloss is perfect for the eyes and the lips. I don't know if you can really see that shimmer, but it has a nice gloss look to it. It makes it look real. I love it. Um, oh, one last thing, too. I was doing where I showed you earlier in the video where I had some pitting that I missed and I put my smooth finish in there. It's definitely dry now. And you just go in with your base paint and just right over it. Never even know. Never even know you had a fix there. All right, we're leaving now. Okay. Tell him, see you later. He said he said bye to you already. And he got out of the shower. Oh. oh Tell him, see you later. I'm glad he was pause over. Real quick, come I can't pause. Walk away. No, just tell him I'm glad he stayed. Okay, there we go. So I'm going to put the other eyelash on. I have a fan blowing here, so it's kind of helped dry this. Just stick it here to get some air on it. I want to get the other eyelash on for you. <sighs> so, yeah, um, Helen, definitely I recommend that over Maj Podge. But you can absolutely use Maj Podge. Absolutely. I just um, don't like to. <clears throat> I'm more happy with the other stuff. And also, I also use the spray. I don't have the bottle in here. Um, when I'm using heavy glitter, for example, when I, like when I do this pumpkin, I'm going to have heavy glitter 
on it. You can take your Duraclear and you can dab it. And it's a lot of work because you got to dab it on your glitter. It will seal it, but wow, it's so much easier to get your spray. Shh, your acrylic sealant works so much easier. So I have a bottle. I'm almost done with my bottle. I got to get some more or can. It's not bottle. I think I kind of overdid the glue on that eye. I think we're okay to put the other eyelash on, so I'm going to do that. Make sure it's curved so it don't lift up on you. This one. Again, just make sure whenever you do the eyelashes, you have time to spend frequently checking it during the drying process so you can readjust it. If you don't have time to do it, don't don't put them on until you do. And do not, 100% do not use hot glue. Not on your eyelashes, though. No. That will just eat up your styrofoam paint. It's okay if you use it on other things, you know, just dab a little bit. It works. I've, I use it all the time, but do not use it for your eyelashes because it does, it gets so hot, it eats up your styrofoam. Just want to use little bits. Like when I'm doing my florals and stuff, I use styrofoam, or I mean the hot glue, but that's different. To put it on the eye, so I just kind of run it right over. Okay. Also, another thing you want to look at, you want to look at her because some of the eyelashes will ride up and some will stay down. So you want them even. So just kind of look and sure you get rid of the any paint that's or any glue that starts to drip she's still going to have a little bit of trouble putting eyeshadow so she may not even put eyeshadow however can also use real makeup I don't like to but you can I've done it a few times it's absolutely, you can do it. Do not use Duraclear. Duraclear with real makeup. Don't do that. You have a mess. So there she is. Just a very simple head. Um, again, I'm going to do some touch-ups. It does need some touch-ups that I'll do. Um but yeah, she's going to be given away to one of my group members tomorrow. I'm going to choose a winner tomorrow. And she is going to be able to do whatever she wants to it. She could turn her into a Halloween. She can paint flowers. She could put her in a wreath. She could decorate her. She can make her own lips. Um, whatever she wants to do. Thank you, Helen. So, um, like I mentioned, I was going to go continue on with this, but I'm going to actually stop this live because it's a whole different subject than this. So um, I will come back on in a little while. I think I'm going to um, see about dinner and then come back and do another live finishing up my pumpkin head. And that'll be making the eyes and putting the glitter and all that jazz. And then this one, too, I have to put another coat of paint on her, but I'll do that later. So thank you again for watching. Um, again, please subscribe, thumbs up, and hit the notification bell so you'll be notified when I go live. Also, come check me out on Facebook if you have a Facebook page. Um, creepy holiday stuff. I would love to have you like and follow and um, check out my photos and if you do want to learn how to make a lot of these heads yourself come join my group on creepy corner um, 
I have uh, pre-recorded tutorials. Uh, pre-recorded tutorials, group live tutorials, giveaways every month, just like this is a giveaway. We have a lot of fun. Uh, you do need a Facebook page for that. I do have a link on my Facebook page that um, has where you can subscribe. It is $15 a month and you can cancel anytime. Once you click on the link and you pay, then you just go to the group and request to join. Then I'll go in and approve. And also, if you have Instagram, you can find me there and you can find me on Pinterest. So thank you all so much. And I will see you again really soon. And I hope this helped a lot. Thanks. Bye.